So I got to talking on Instagram a bit the other day about the weird, weird era of the 90s when the Columbine massacre had just happened and if you were a young goth at high school they genuinely suspected you of being a potential terrorist. Now terrorist wasn't the word they used back then, terrorist only became this big buzzword after 9-11, but uh, basically that's what it was. If you went to school wearing a trench coat or anything you could be suspended. If you wrote any kind of slightly dark poetry they would freak out, you could be interrogated, which is kind of what happened to me and I will talk about that in a minute, but it, it I feel like with the way the world is at the moment that terrorism and, and these attacks on people and this stereotyping of people because of what they look like or, or what religion or ideology they subscribe to or you think they subscribe to because that's what they look like uh, and that's really blowing up into so much extremism these days. I don't want this video to turn into a whole political diatribe about that but I just think it's kind of interesting to remember that there was a point in history where literally teenagers at school who were just a bit weird and a bit awkward wearing black clothes and writing gloomy poetry <laughs> you know and we generally think of those people these days as as being you know the, the kind of the, the weird the weird little shy people in the corner you know with their weird their weird poetry and their fanfic and, and their video games you, you don't really look at them and go oh, run away oh my god oh my god they're gonna kill us all but th that's kind of how it was in the 90s. So yes, I thought I would do a bit of a 90s flashback for this video and don as many of my old 90s pieces as I could possibly find. This bondage collar I never used to take off in the 90s, it was my favourite thing in the world. This Omen t-shirt, everyone used to have these and you can't get them anywhere anymore so I am never ever parting with this bitch. And this is my full outfit with my trip pants, doing my best impersonation of my sullen, unsmiling teenage self. The bullies at school used to call me the Grim Reaper, I never ever smiled. I will try and find a picture of my actual teenage self in my suspicious terrorist looking trench coat looking glum and unsmiling as ever. And, uh, <laughs> I did not have these earrings in the 90s but I would have loved them because they are taxidermy feet of a carrion crow holding little anks and they are very very sinister and wonderful. And, uh, <laughs> so yes, yeah, setting the scene. At some point I am going to go through all my old photos and my old clothes and do a bit of a, a bit of a memorable a flashback of, of my old, often very, very cringy teenage photos, so uh, subscribe and shit if you want to see that soon. But yes, returning to the point, Columbine, I think even the youngsters amongst you know the basics of the Columbine massacre, but the things some of the younger lot may not know are the myths that were going around about Columbine at this time in the 90s that because the two perpetrators of the massacre, even though they both shot themselves and died, um, because they were very young a lot of the court documents and everything were sealed for a certain number of years and it was only, I don't know, about a decade later that a really, really comprehensive book was written about all of it. That busted a lot of the myths that were spread at the time, but at the time of the massacre the basic myths were that the two perpetrators, Dylan and Eric I think their names were, they were both goths, they were really, really into Marilyn Manson's music, they called themselves the trench coat mafia because they walked around in trench coats and were generally scary, they were outcasts, they were bullied kids who eventually you know, on this 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 cocktail of of hormones and bulliedness and teenage angst and Marilyn Manson's terrible satanic music, they eventually lost their shit and and went and and took out all the terrible jocks who'd been bullying them. And uh, so, in a way, if you were a bullied goth teenager at this time, terrible as it sounds, these two almost took on a slightly heroic role to some of us because we felt like, well, yeah, we take a lot of shit from people all the time. We know how they feel. And, uh, you know, it, I know a lot of people who have said, self-included, that if we had guns lying around the house in this country, you know, if your parents had guns that you had access to, you can see why this shit happens, you really can, when you're going through that kind of bullying every day and you're so depressed that you don't care if you die anyway, so if you're gonna die anyway and you're gonna kill yourself and there are people you hate and you've got a gun to spare, you can see the temptation, can't you? But anyway, yes, the, the myth was goths, you bully them too far, 
they go crazy, they lash out, they fucking shoot everybody. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, around about this time, I'd started dressing goth, and the weird thing is that you would imagine, I think, today, that if if you dress fairly normally at school, maybe you're not going to get picked on that much, but if you go to school and you start dressing goth, you're probably going to get picked on. The opposite was actually true for me, that I'd been picked on all the way through my high school, high school career or whatever you want to call it, all the way through high school I had been picked on every fucking day, it was complete misery, it was bloody awful, but when I started dressing goth the bullies actually backed off. Now I don't know whether part of that was me just having more self-confidence and obviously not giving a fuck what they thought anymore, whereas for all these years you know I'd been buying chavy adidas trousers and really freaking out about about every coat I had to buy for school in winter, every pair of trainers I had to buy for PE because it was like it had to be the right one, it had to be the right stupid chavy sports brand or I was going to get picked on. So when I started dressing goth and it was kind of like, you know what, I clearly no longer give a fuck what any of you think, they kind of backed off. But I do think Columbine also had something to do with this too because a lot of the people in my year knew that I was a self-harmer because, you know, there are always those people who are your kind of fake friends and towards the end of high school I had a horse. And when you've got a horse, you get a lot of fake friends because they want to come round and they want to ride your horse and all the rest of it. So there were these fake friends. They'd found out that I self-harmed because, you know, you get changed in pee, people see your scars, whatever. And so that had spread around, and back then self-harm wasn't a thing. You know, it wasn't a thing people know about that, oh, it's just like a, you know, lots of depressed teenagers do it, it's no big deal. Back then it was like, what the fuck, this is the craziest thing we've ever heard. Like, literally this crazy bitch goes home and, like, they get out a razor blade and they cut themselves up and, like, watch the blood run out of their own body. Like, what satanic weird shit is that? So, uh, my school year, they, they knew this about me, then I'm wearing a trench coat, then Columbine happens, and they start to realise, oh my god, okay, those kids in America, they were bullied for years. Then they went crazy and they killed everyone. We've been bullying this bitch for a very long time. She's she clearly is starting to go a little bit crazy, and uh, maybe we'd 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 better not not actually push her too far. So there was that. But the the real weird thing didn't start until college for me. That in the UK you come out of school at sixteen, not eighteen. After the age of sixteen, um, education is completely optional. So I went on to sixth form college, and this is the point at which the the Columbine hysteria really seemed to be reaching a crazy, crazy level, because my first day of college. Um, there'd been this form you had to fill in about like medical conditions, medication you were on or anything, you know, in case anything happened to you. So I'd written in this thing like, I have depression, I'm on Prozac, uh, you know, I'd written down that and I was dressing goth and I was kind of pulled away from the class at the end of the day by this, I guess she was my form teacher, I, I didn't stay at that college long so I really don't remember, but my form teacher kind of pulled me away at the end of the lesson to kind of talk to me and it it seemed the question she was asking me it weren't just the generally concerned stuff you might ask a depressed teenager who's suddenly under your care. You know, it wasn't so much about me. It wasn't like, okay, so are you know, are you in any danger of hurting yourself? Do you, are you are having counselling at the moment? Do you think we should refer you to the counsellor? Is there anything you need? Do you have any kind of special educational needs relating to this? It wasn't like that. There was a lot of questions I seem to remember about violent thoughts, violent impulses, um, you know, wh whether I'd ever had violent thoughts or impulses towards anyone else, wh whether anything had ever happened in terms of, of altercations between me and another person at my last school. It was all very much about have you done anything to anyone else, <laughs> which, is, which is a bit weird, you know? I feel like that's not how it would go down these days, if you'd just gone to college, they found out you were a depressed, I don't think they would immediately start asking you if you were about to kill everybody, you know. Um, but anyway, you know, that happened and I didn't get on with that woman anyway. 
But the point at which it really got weird was when we were set our very first creative writing assignment and I had been absolutely gagging for this. The whole point of going to college for me had been wanting to do more creative writing and have fun with that and write things. So we get this writing assignment and I'm super excited and what it is is we have to write a poem about a journey. Any journey, you know, broad scope topic, just write a poem about a journey. Now, I really, really wish I still had this poem. I really desperately do wish I had it, but I sadly don't. However, <laughs> some of the cliches about goths in the Columbine era were a little bit true. Um, and this, this is a whole topic that, that kind of deserves its own video and I will give its own video at some point. But basically, if you were a bullied, alternative kind of weirdo teenager in the pre-internet era because at this point the internet was very very basic and it had only really been available to me for about a year and a half at this point so the majority of my teenage life I had been completely completely alone and isolated and you teenagers of, of this era you cannot comprehend the level of isolation that that you went through before the internet that uh you know for, for i mean even for me now the idea of going on holiday for a week with no wi-fi is is pretty unthinkable um but if you go on holiday these days and there's no wi-fi usually you go there with someone you really like like a good friend or whatever and it's like okay we're gonna unplug for a while and spend some real world time with people who matter to us so imagine that you're, that you're not doing that. Imagine you're going on holiday for a full year somewhere with no internet connection whatsoever. You can't stream anything, you can't watch anything. You're left alone with your own thoughts. You can't talk to anyone. All your internet friends, they're gone, they're gone. You're not gonna speak to them for the next year. And all the people around you, you've got nothing in common with them at all. They're, you know, they're like co-workers that you have nothing in common with. It. And this is the next year, just you alone with your thoughts, nowhere to share them at all, no one to interact with, no, and you, you genuinely feel like no one is ever going to understand you. And that, it, it does breed a very special sort of hatred for the world. And, um, and I, I've always liked gory writing. When I write, all my life it's been gory. Even when I was a very young child, I enjoyed facetiously gory writing. And, uh, and if you've read my book, you know, I'm facetious, I'm gory, I write, I like to write about disgusting stuff. So it's, it's college, I've finally been given a creative writing assignment, it's about a journey. So and the other element to this is that I had just started taking Prozac and I don't know if anyone else has tried taking Prozac or any other SSRI but it's quite common for the for the first month or so to basically feel like you're on speed all the time and that's how it was for me and how it was for my boyfriend at the time as well who was the one who kind of said hey maybe you should try this um because I was just like bouncing off the walls all the time I was really really like twitchy and kind of kind of babbling and and angry also anything could make me quite angry so you know there's this, this, this kind of like coked up <laughs> coked up frenzy going on but i always hated the town i lived in when when i was this age and to go to college i had to walk right through the center of this town that i hated and a lot of my school bullies were still at college i hated them i'd see them around the place and i just, i hated the town i hated the people in it <laughs> i was a very angsty teenager so my poem i wrote about walking to college um, <laughs> oh, this is so immature, it's embarrassing, but I wrote about walking to college and pausing in the street to get out a razor blade, slash open my arm <laughs> so I was bleeding. Then I pulled out two guns. Now, obviously the detailing in this was very bad. I didn't know how to use a gun. I didn't even know what to call a gun. I didn't know the names, the makes of guns, how you use them. I, I didn't care about that creative license so you know so in this poem i'm striding through town dripping with blood pulling out these guns and just blowing people away and the the detail was lurid i remember that much you know detail about about 
blowing people away and just watching their heads explode like melons, just, you know, just brains splattering the shop windows. W.H. Smith's Woolworths splattered in gore. It's dripping down those chunks of brain dripping down. You know, I bang someone right through the stomach. Their intestines are tumbling out. There's a baby in a pram screaming. Its mother gets shot. The gore splatters all over the baby and, uh, it, and I'm striding through. And I remember I quoted in this poem um, the song by Cubanet, Oxyacetylene. Um, your beauty on my skin like oxyacetylene or something because that was the that was like my favorite angry song for like striding to college too so uh, so i think i'd written this poem while listening to this song and just just picturing just like shooting these people just blowing them up splatter splatter and uh and for me the, you know this this was this was not like an exercise in this is a threat or anything you know I'm in England, we don't have guns. I obviously was not going to do this, but you know, and the level, the level of gore that I went into, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe it's just an Asperger's thing and other people do not realize this about me, that, that when I go into the, these, these, these insanely revolting tangents about things, I am being fucking facetious. I find it hilarious. I, <laughs> And I like to use my words. I, I have a have a big vocabulary and I like to use my words and I like to paint a, a very revolting picture. So I did. And anyway, I handed in this poem. <laughs> yeah, so um so again I'm 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 pulled aside <laughs> no, no, you know the next day or something and uh told that that I'm being sent to see the headmistress. This this is literally like the first week, maybe the second week of college, and uh, and I, I'm now on report. Not to anyone, but literally to the headmistress. I have got to go on report about twice a week. I have to. I, I think people are monitoring me at every lesson. I have to I have to be reporting to the headmistress all the time. Um, uh, you know, and the headmistress is, is asking me all these weird questions. You know, I, I kept trying to explain to them this is just what I find interesting. Like literally, I just find dark stuff interesting. Like, I, I, you know, I didn't want to write about some journey, like walking through a field of flowers, picking fucking daisies and smelling them. I, this is, this is my reality. I'm kind of depressed and I'm kind of frustrated and I wanted to, I, I like gory things. I like dark things. That's what I'm into. But, but you know, you, you, you don't think everyone who makes horror movies and things is, is a serial killer. You know, Stephen King, for fuck's sake. I mean, he, he writes endless, he's endless tomes of sick shit while he's off his face on coke and no one's arrested him yet. But the thing is, this was not uncommon. Goths, particularly in America, and in America it was way worse. And you, you can understand why, because in America the, the threat was kind of more real. You know, in the UK, you ain't got guns, you ain't going to be doing anything. But in, in America, it happened it, it keeps happening, it, it could happen. So in America, if you came to school dressed goth, particularly wearing a trench coat, you would often be sent home immediately, you could be suspended. If you wrote a poem, anything like the poem I wrote, you would be dragged up on it. Some goths, I think, were even questioned by the police over poems they wrote like that. I mean, if I had written that poem in America, it, it would have been serious shit. Like, it would have been more than report, it would have been police station stuff. Um, that it was reaching a level of like thought crimes that, you know, if your parents got suspicious about it, because parents did as well, you know, parents saw this and thought, oh my God, my kid is a goth, my kid wears a trench coat, my kid listens to Marilyn Manson, oh my God, my kid is being poisoned by these 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 sick satanic doctrines that this this horrible, terrible man is, is preaching. And, uh, and so parents would go into their kids' rooms and would start reading their diaries and things. And back then, like say, being a goth, awkward, bullied teenager was very isolating and many of us were very, very, very depressed. So if you went and you went through our diaries, you would find a lot of a lot of weird, lonely, depressed, miserable, dark shit. And parents were invading their kids' privacy, were freaking out, police were getting involved, schools were getting involved. It, it was like a genuine, serious clusterfuck of a time for all of this stuff. Um... And I, I don't really know whether it ever blew over or whether 9-11 is what kind of made st people stop panicking about goths because there was there was another outsider to point fingers at, you know, and, and goths and their, their, their weird little diaries and, and you know, their, their one 
one massacre kind of paled in comparison to 9-11 and then the war on terror and, and everything else that, that spiralled out of that and, and goths kind of, you know, sunk down the chain. And I think also youth culture kind of became more of a bouncy thing that the kind of the emo thing and the post the post punk the kind of the pop punk thing popped up like blink 182 and 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 you know green day and and bands like that who i'm currently mentally blanking on but you know avril lavigne and that kind of thing and youth culture became a bit more kind of bouncy i think round about that time that people were still kind of dressing in black and being a bit weird but you know they they were skateboarding and they were singing songs about boys and, and and girls and and you know cutesy kind of teenage affairs and things like that and and youth culture i think became a little bit kind of kind of dark looking but not so dark and people stopped freaking out about it so much and i think also the internet becoming more social goths and everything were less isolated and maybe better understood um and the the whole the whole columbine hysteria kind of kind of faded away but uh but yes it, it was an interesting time as far as that college yeah i did not stay there very long i stayed there for about three months uh and then i dropped out went to whitby gothic weekend and moved in with my boyfriend um and made a living selling dreadlocks <laughs> for a couple of years and, uh, and it, it was what gosh um a decade it was a decade before i went back to college and completed the whole thing went to university and finished it all off and uh and i was i was still dressing goth and all of that then nobody nobody asked me if i was if i was about to be a serial killer um nobody nobody put me on report for for being weird um, my, actually my university dissertation, uh, both the stories I used for it are in my book, Fetus and the Vagina of Apocalypse, which are, which are pretty twisted shit. Um, <laughs> those were my university dissertation. My, my university teacher who saw those and who saw all my sick, weird, creative writing, she's actually my Facebook friend now, and I mentioned her in the front of my book, and she's lovely, and she, ne she never thought I was a crazy serial killer or anything. So it's interesting how times change. Um, the, the, yeah, me, I, I didn't really change between my episodes at, at college and at university. I, I was, I was still the same weirdo writing the same weird sick shit in my poems, but people realised it was, it was facetious and sick and, and creative writing, you know, imagination. They, they didn't think it was literally a threat, whereas Columbine era was weird. So uh, yes, older goths, do, do you have strange tales of this time too? Tell me, but uh, oh, I've talked for a very long time. I thought this was going to be quite quick, but it wasn't. But uh, anyway, I've had quite quite a lot of fun rethinking this, but I, I am so gutted I don't have that poem anymore. I really, really wish I did just to see like, A, was the writing really bad? B, was it more or less lurid than I remember? Like, I, I would love to read it again. Um, I'm almost tempted to contact my old college and just be like, do you remember this really psychotic kid who, who you put on report and thought was crazy and possibly sent a copy of their poem to the police? Do you still have that poem? Because it was me and I'd quite like it back. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. But yes, at some point I will be doing a, a, big, a big flashback of my old, old 90s photos and talking about a bit more about yeah the the isolation of what it was like before the internet because you know even having been there and having lived that it feels so alien now and it feels like like a time I, I could I could not fucking go back to I couldn't I couldn't go back to to that level of isolation like you know this right now you hello hello you me communicating with each other and and if I didn't didn't have any of this, you know, what 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 would I be doing in this room? This this because this room kind of feels like a little a little satellite where I I can contact all of you guys and I could contact all the people and it doesn't feel like a lonely place. It's it's like a little a little spaceship with with tentacles into the whole wide world. But if you cut off the Wi-Fi, this is just me in a fucking room in a in a shitty town, and uh. Uh, I don't want to go back to that reality, but uh, but yes. Anyway, tell me your tales if if you you were affected by the Columbine hysteria too, and uh, tell me your tales also if you find that this attitude about goths 
still kind of goes on in your town because I do hear some goths in American particularly really like Bible Belt towns they are still you know they do still get very Christian people coming up to them and telling them they're going to hell and things like this just because they're wearing black and it's all very 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 strange but um weird time long story going away now <laughs> bye bye